naturally you know in our environment out of ignorance and lack of information and exposure when a stand of banana or plantain like this bring out the bunch and when the bunch is matured we cut it and we allow this one to be wasted just yes we throw it away for instance just like this yes whereas this is money from it's dr money precious yes okay now can we hear from her now this is money like you are, you are cutting the stem you are throwing it away you don't know that money is what you are dollars of money dollars so this one is not the money seriously wow just like you are eating salad <laughs> And I he guess the test. yes, he quenched the test. The yes, body. and also guess that this can be medicinal. I'm here at the office of Doctor Precious. Awesome! I just came in to see what she is doing. She she's an agro dealer. She's a farmer. She's an entrepreneur to the core. She doesn't allow the issue of gender to stop her from what she's doing. So I decided to come around to meet with her for us to discuss about business and to project Africa. She's one of the ladies that has decided to change the narrative of Africa. So this morning, I've decided to visit her in her office here at the Uyo village in Akwa Ibom State. So nice meeting with you, ma. Thank you yes, very much for this privilege. It's my pleasure. Uh, Welcome to Awesome Farm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a nice privilege. I've been hearing of Awesome Farm, Dr. Precious Awesome. So I've decided to come with my team to meet with you. Please, can you tell my wonderful audience who you are? Thank you very much. Hello, Africa. My name is Dr. Precious Awesome. By God's grace, the CEO of Awesome God Agro Allied Industries Limited. We are resident here. Our head office is here in Iba Oku, Uyo Village Road, Uyo Akwai from States. And by God's grace, I am the continental president of Nawi Crate. Wow, Nawi Crate. <laughs> now few create. few days ago, I was hearing Nawi Crate on uh, the radio about the groundbreaking, and so you have also uh, you actually brought up the issue of Nawi Crate, which was one of the topics we are going to talk about. So, in, in a notion, in a summary, can you just flash on the Nawi Crate? Though we will still come back to that. Okay, thank you. Nawi Crate is actually an acronym for national wealth creation and distribution it is a citizens wealth creation program that is saddled with the responsibility of drilling the untapped africans wealth wow. or africa's wealth for africa and is a citizens wealth creation program where we allow citizens to come in and built up a wealth system for themselves. Okay. So I, I was going through your Facebook uh, page this morning while I was coming. So I saw something on, uh, there is a short video in your page when you were talking about the Nawi Crate. You did mention uh, food on your table and money in your pocket. So how comes about this philosophy from the Nawi Crate? Food on our table and money in our pocket. You no, know, yeah, that is actually our uh, slogan. Okay. Now, our slogan is food on the tables and okay. money in a pocket. Wow. Food is fundamental to human existence. Sure, sure. And every other thing follows. If we can solve the problem of food, I believe that to some extent, some other challenges will be solved. So now, Ukraine is looking at, you know, uh, encouraging robust food production. Okay. You want to ensure people feed well. As you can see, uh, the prices of food is, you know, increasing than ever before since the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And everything now is expensive. People hardly eat three square meal. So now we create is out to show people, to teach people that you can actually fit well, nutritious meal. Okay. And our focus is showing people that inside that waste, inside that thing you throw away, you dispose as, as waste, that there is delicacy in them. And 
the money in a pocket is that now Ukraine is out to use those wastes we disposed, you know, those uh, waste uh, and turn them to wealth. Okay. So people can make money. Where farmers can have added income, can have, you know, you know a revenue that they never even imagine coming into the pocket. Okay, thank you. We will, also, we will come back to that. Okay. I also come to discover that uh, where you are now and you are doing extremely well is not where you belong. Why, why do I say so? I discovered that you were a graduate from uh, Aquarium State Polytechnic, Ikoro Sudua, and also discovered that uh, where you, you actually focus during your years of studies was in accounting. So how do you digress from accounting to becoming a kind of uh, a known farmer that you are making this kind of web that we are hearing, not only in Aquaibum in Nigeria, but even in Africa and outside Africa. What is the secret about this? Thank you very much. I want to say that uh, what I'm doing is actually purpose. Okay. What I was destined to do, what okay. I was created to do. Not really what you studied in school. what I studied in school. Okay. I discovered that when, while growing up, I had passion for agriculture. In fact, as a young person in primary school, I had, you know, a garden where I was planting. People would come and imagine, how come that this garden is so lushful? You see my fluted pumpkin. If you look at my okra and paper, as a child in primary school, wow. I had this kind of passion. I was planting even in uh, tins, tomato tin, milk tin, and my thing was growing. My farm was doing well. That was just as a child. But, you know, pursuing career... My parents actually wanted me to become an accountant because my mom studied accounting. And she was imagining me becoming an accountant in a, in a bank, sitting down in an AC office. And so she encouraged that I should go for accounting, even mm. though my mind was to go with law. So what did she convinced me and I went for it. But I discovered that even while in school, people, my HOD noted that I, I noticed that I wasn't even, you know, a part of that field. Okay. But because I, you know, whatever you want to do, you have to do it well. I had to put in my best just to ensure I graduate. Now, this, the look, putting that side by side, my accounting experience have really boosted my business, my business, uh, okay. yeah, joining. So by, by implication, you are not like regretting that you read accounting? Not at all. Okay. I'm even trying to do my master's in accounting. Serious. Yeah. It's, yes. it's helping me. I'm wow. able to keep my account record. I'm even to keep my farm records. And, and at there's no day I will end my business day without thinking, getting back to the house, I will flash it. What was the income? What was the revenue? What was the expenditure? So it's really helping me to keep things in, in, in you know, to keep track record of what I'm doing. But coming to agriculture, I, you know, I have a passion. My passion is to ensure that everybody around me smiles. It was yeah. this passion that pushed me into starting an NGO in 2011, August. So I trained youth on different kind of skill because my aim is, let's see how everyone around us can be happy. We might not all be rich with flying exotic vehicles. Well, we can live, we can be contented. Okay. So when I look at my youth around me, there was so much of hunger at that time, and I was a youth copper. I just I was just still serving in Borono State. So when I came to Aquaibo, I saw hunger. I said, fine, we can solve hunger problem, but not by dashing food, but by teaching people how they can make food by themselves. So that was how I started my NGO. And moving on with the NGO, I was not satisfied. I wasn't okay. So 2015, I was looking at something sustainable. How do we solve this problem sustainably? How do we maintain? How do we, you know, put food on people's table? And I was thinking, I was asking God, thinking several things. And one of those days, I had the privilege to work with the Institute of President on Ethics and Values in Abuja. Okay. And one of those trips, we went to FCT, Science and Technology, and I saw someone, I saw plants in the nylon bag, plantain. I'm going to show them to you. I have them here. Okay. I saw plantain. In, I saw a flower in a nylon bag, and I, I told the white woman, please, when I'm going, I would love to go with one of your flower. She was like, taking a bag, and was, what are you talking about? This is not flower. I asked her, it's not flower. Then what is it? She said, it's plantain. Serious. Ha, ah, amazing. Plantain in a nylon, nylon. bag. This is, that is not is conventional. It, this, this, this nylon, is it like a, a nursery? Or, or that's where it's going to stay permanently till the time it will bear fruit? No, that was just a, a nursery. They okay, just put it out from a green house. Okay. So okay. that's, she explained what it does. You see this plantain? When you plant one, you have this ten, And wow. so you can become a billionaire in one year. Millionaire. Wow, that was great. 
So I went back to her. I tell her, please tell me the secret. That was how she told me how that thing is done. And I had to travel outside to Malaysia to learn how to propagate the banana I planted. And I came back and I saw it was lovely. And I taught my youth, you know, the agri sector, I taught the right youth. And that's how I, I moved, you know, st you know, step by step into full fledged agriculture. Oh, okay, you just mentioned something on Ide, your trip to Malaysia. During the groundbreaking, I was privileged to be there. And I heard when you talked to, you know, the audience about uh, your, your trip to Malaysia, you know, that it was not actually something that maybe the government sponsored you, you know, the risks you took and all those stuff. So, so can you like, uh, maybe in a summary, tell people, because there are many people that are listening to you, that what we are talking right now is actually motivating them. So that there are many people that are creative naturally, but they don't know how to start. I know that this interview will actually go a long way to help the youth out there and other people to know how to start. So can you, in a summary form, tell us about your trip to Malaysia? Thank you very much. Actually, when I had a dream of becoming a farmer, okay. a planting farmer, I had several, uh, I, I had my training first at Abuja, at the AFCT, and I wasn't satisfied. Okay. And I needed to have more training to understand better, and I needed money to make this trip. Okay. But here I was, there was no money, I did not have such amount of money. The uh, one point eight million to make my trip. As at that time, as at that time, there was no such money, okay. and so. But I told myself, I need this thing, I need this knowledge. My vision, my passion was get this knowledge, get and then teach it to other people, so all of us can rise. So I, that with that kind of heart, I did not sit. I I went to Abuja again. Was hustling. I did all kind of things to ensure I make money. I was carrying cement. I was carrying granite. Even as a lady. Even as, I'm not talking about, as a, as a graduate. Sure. As a graduate. And at, at this time, I was already running my, I, I was already running NGO. I was, it wasn't like, just going from the village. Someone that I've gone to places. Okay. But this particular period I needed to travel, there was no money. And there was no one I could call. You know, so I just to go and stoop down. There's a book I studied when I was in in, in history. They said the the title is "She Stooped to Conga." Okay. That's that book keep ringing in my memory. Mind. You have to stoop okay. if you must conquer. Okay. So I went. I had to stoop down. I did all those menial jobs. At the point, hunger was striking. I had to go to a restaurant. I would tell the people, "Can I wash plates so so I can eat?" Wow. And the man would look at me. Ah, you are beautiful. What is going on? I said, "I'm reserving money. I'm trying to save money so I can travel out." So one of those days, one of the people that I went to carry cement saw me, Madam, what are you really doing here? I said, I'm looking for money. I, I want to travel out. So the man, you know, pick interest. What, what is the traveling for? And I told him, this is what I want to do. This, I want to go to Malaysia. I want to go and learn how to do planting. And this is it. So the man said, Kai, go punish poverty. Mm. And I am going to help you. Wow. So that was how I got help. Okay. The other one is that someone from Akwaibom who had known me also, he heard that I'm in Abuja and called a friend. Precious is in Abuja and she's not, things are not really working well. The brother called me, Mr. Peter. Where are you right now? I told him I'm in Abuja. I, I told him the street. I'm coming over there. And when he came, he saw I was so dirty. I was, of course, the cement was on me. What is going on? It's not Precious or Foundation. I said, I am. Wow. Okay. What is the problem? I told the man, I want to travel. I want to go learn how to make money. And I don't have money. The man said, how much do you want? Is it cash or check? I thought it was funny. I thought it was just, you know, pulling my leg. Mm. Before I could know it, he entered the car, collected my account number, and that's how money was given to me. Wow. Now, how was I able to make the money? Because I had to go out. If I did not go out of my way, yeah. trying to push forward, trying yeah. to do anything I can, they wouldn't have been favor for yeah, me. I, I think that that goes to confirm this saying, that when there is a will, there is a way. Sure. Yeah. So, sure. so you, there was this willingness in you that you want to make it, want to change the narrative, and that was why the way comes in. I also wish that the youth out there that are hearing us will actually learn from this your life story yeah. and experience. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. So, 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 can you just in a summary through tell us your experience at Malaysia? Well. It, of course, that was my first time. Okay. And everything there was strange. The kind of food you eat, 
the people you mix with a couple of them they cannot even speak English. So you have to learn how to speak English. But I stayed and I was able to train, get trained, and I, I was my you know, my according to my boss, you are smart. Africa, you are smart. I learned faster than every other person and I won an award for, for propagation. Wow. And I came back gloriously. Wow. And so I came back and I started my business. Okay. The same thing happened when I went to India. I, I, I did what I needed to do and I won. Wow. Please just bring me the plant and let me show it to my viewer. Okay. The plantain in like, Malaysia and then in India too. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. You, you just mentioned something now. I, I, I think a few months ago, I saw online your trip is it to Uganda or to where? Uganda. Okay, Uganda. Yes, Uganda. That you also won an award. So, so what is the the mystery behind all this? Any place you go, you win award. Any place you go, you win. What is so peculiar about you? I will say that it is God. It is Everything God. about my life is God. To me, my life is a mystery because I am one of those that nobody had ever thought anything who could come out of her as a woman. And so I when people challenge me that nothing will come out of me, I had to tell God, I know you created me for a purpose and something good must come out of me. So I strive. And that my trip to Rwanda, I don't even know who who was the person that they nominated me for that award. You know, it is called a wire. Okay. It's called why it's, it's a Women of the Year Aquipreneur Award. Okay. So I went, I don't know who nominated me. I received a call. You've been nominated for this Wire Award and you have to come to Rwanda. The next thing they sent another mail to me, you are now the, the top 15 applicants. So out of 4,780 applicants from 38 countries, I was one of such top 15 Africa, and in Nigeria, we were just three of us. Wow. And so I went there, and with God, I emerged. I I, I was the, the second runner-up, okay? So I, I just give God the glory. And what really stood me out was my, the value, the value products, things okay. I was able to do okay. from those things people call waste. Okay, the value addition. Yes, the value addition to okay. banana and plantain. Okay. So, and people were captivated. Are you sure? You mean plantain? You mean banana can do this? Let's see how you are doing it. So okay. I showed them how I did it. And I thank God. It's been good all the way. The, the thing is, when you are actually working according to the plan of God for your life, he make ways open for you. Okay, thank you. We will be back to continue. Let's just take a break. Okay.